this is the guy who was digging on my sofa. Anyway, giving him a chew, that'll keep him busy. Right, so question three. Question three tells you to read section three, which we're going to do in a moment to prep up for the, uh, the answers to the question. This time, how does the writer, how does the writer present Andrea's attitudes towards her new sister and stepfather? So we have two people that she is going to have attitudes towards. The dog is back, he has eaten his chew. How have you managed that so quickly? Um, you should include what Andrea's attitudes are towards her new sister and stepfather, how the writer used language and other techniques to show these attitudes. So we have to be careful. We are not asked what are the new sister and stepfather like. We are asked about Andrea's attitude to what they are like. Okay, so it's really easy to fall into a habit of going, oh, she has a good attitude to them, or she has a bad attitude to them, or she has a positive attitude towards them, or a negative attitude towards them, because a lot of the time when we talk, we tend to talk about an attitude being positive or negative in our everyday speech. But in literature, and when we're having a look at, at um, English language and, and extracts and characters, we have to use a full range of the English language to discuss attitudes. So we know that we are going to make sure that we pay attention to how was it done in section three. And I'm interested in the narrator's responses to her sister and her new stepfather. Okay, what does she display in attitude? Okay, so remember, we left the reading for question two where she, they'd, um, her and her sister Laura had just uh, gone off and taken those chews into school. Um, and we find ourselves now at the beginning of section three on one particular day in the playground at primary school. I skidded to a halt one afternoon when the headmaster called me by his strange surname. Andrea Clark Hawkins. Now, given that her father has given her that surname, Hawkins, and she feels it is strange, we can see some sort of attitude there that she does not welcome having a new surname. So I am going to underline strange surname because that's the shortest way to help me support what I'm gonna say. And I am going to name the attitude, okay? And I'm going to say that it is, that she feels it's an unwelcome addition in her life. But the only word I'm going to write down is unwelcome because I will explain it fuller when I write it for the examiner. Okay, so you can see I've done the first one there. Let's keep going. And then I will give you some space as well to do some of your own. Um, I skidded to a halt one afternoon when the headmaster called me by a strange name, which I've put is an un unwelcome thing for her. Andrea Clark Hawkins. My name wagged its ugly new tail. So there's further emphasis. How was it done? It was further emphasised. This is further emphasised in wagged its ugly new tail. Now, there's only really one word that is working hard there, isn't there, to say that she does not like having this man's name ugly. Okay. Suggests hatred, disrespect of his name. So what I'm gonna do, I've underlined wagged its ugly new tail, but I've double underlined ugly because that will be my Zoom word. And then I'm just going to annotate, what did I say? I can't remember. Um, hatred um, and then disrespect okay she has an attitude of hatred she has an attitude of disrespect towards her new name she has she feels that her new surname is unwelcome which is from the first one okay you can see there um, how I've managed to have a look at the language and that language is telling me her attitude which is revealing it to me so we'll do one more together, then I'm going to, again, just time you through the video, talk you through the timings. You can see where you lie on how much time you need to do these parts of the process. Then I'll take you through and then you'll have your writing time. 
So my name wagged its ugly new tail, stirring whispers behind my back until the home bell rang. Whispers behind my back. So these are her classmates are talking about her having this new name and because the new name come, has been given to her by her new father, um, I'm going to suggest something about that. So what is her attitude? Well, they're whispering behind her back. So maybe she feels that she is resentful. Her attitude is a resentful attitude at having a new father. And one of the things the new father brought, of course, is the new name. So I put resentful. Okay, now notice that I am having to really dig a little harder here because the information is not explicit. She's not going to provide you with, uh, my attitude to my new stepfather was one of hatred. My attitude to my new stepfather was one of disgust. My attitude towards my new stepfather was one of disdain. It's not going to be, can you spot those words? It's going to be, can I look at what she's describing of her life and from that, the word is extrapolate, so pull from that, pull out of that, that little process of, well, if she's telling me that, she must have been feeling this. That's why question three gets a little more challenging, okay? So I've underlined three things for you so far. We are looking in a 10 mark question for about 10 pieces of evidence. So if you can find another seven, that's excellent. If you can find uh, another six or five, you'll be going great too. I'm gonna to do the timings for you. So I've been on this video seven minutes. Let's say that those first three took me a minute to do. We're gonna give you four minutes initially to finish the rest of the underlining. I will let you know when that is up. If you need a little more time after that, not a problem. It just eats into your writing time a little bit. But let's go with four minutes to start with. Okay, off you go. Don't forget you're also looking for the stepsister, not just the father. You've had a minute and a little bit so far. Keep going. Try to jot something down. If you can, if you're coming across a word that works really well for you, like I've double underlined screaming, do some double underlining for Zoom words. Two minutes of reading.
Okay, that's four minutes reading, which totals five if we use my bit. Keep going if you need to. If not, you can scooch me along until we do the right, the um, talk through the writing. Okay, so you would need to stop definitely after uh, what would have been six minin, minutes of reading prep, you would have had to stop because that only leaves you four minutes to write your answers up, which is quite a tall order if you're doing five. Uh, sorry, no, I'm getting my timings wrong. If had six minutes, which would give you nine minutes to do the writing, okay? You could spend another minute just finding a little bit more to get yourself to 10 pieces of evidence. Um, but I think we're ready to go on this now. Okay, so let me just clarify those timings because that was a little bit muddled. This is a 10 mark question. We dedicate 15 minutes to it. Now, obviously within that 15 minutes, we have to look at the question itself, decide what we're uh, trying to pull out. Um, we have to do the reading prep and we have to do the write-up and we're aiming for about 10 pieces of evidence. So timings might be that the first five minutes I spend looking at the question and then doing the underlining. If I need to stretch that to six minutes, I can do. If I want to stretch it to seven, then I can, but I have to be really fast when I write up because that only gives me eight minutes to do the write-up on that. Okay, let's have a look then at what you got, um, what I got, and between us, we'll be able to name some attitudes. So I went through Strange Surname, I went through Wagged It's Ugly New Tail, I went through Whispers Behind My Back. The next thing I underlined, Mother wasn't there to explain the name. Now there's something about that, the fact that um, this new name means something about her her mother not being around to rescue her for me that felt like she felt she'd been abandoned okay so notice how i don't say it was a good attitude a bad attitude a negative attitude a positive attitude i've actually gone with a feeling here okay that she feels abandoned right okay moving on my next one was, because her mother was in hospital giving birth to our new sister, Sarah. Remember, we were asked about Sarah as well. So Sarah, who came out blonde and screaming. So I would use, um, came out blonde and screaming. And it suggests to me that Andrea feels disgusted. Especially with the screaming bit wary, a little bit kind of, whoa, don't quite know what this baby's going to do. It's screaming the house down. So I would be saying the phrase blonde and screaming suggests Andrea felt disgusted, wary, that the baby was alien. And I do not mean alien as in coming off a spaceship. I mean alien in its truest sense, which means unfamiliar. Okay. Disgusted, wary that the baby was alien to her and unfamiliar. And I would have a look at that word screaming as well. The Zoom word screaming suggesting that um, the, the baby was difficult to be around because she made a lot of noise. Okay, moving on. Um, this is a bit of a redeeming feature for Sarah that her eyes were sky blue marbles. Doesn't that sound beautiful? So why would the narrator describe her eyes as sky blue marbles? Well, she must admire her, wonder at her, be in awe of her. They are all attitudes. Admire her, be wondrous of her, 
be in awe of her. The next one, yeasty cheeks made me think of chewing. It's a really awkward little description. Um, it's unusual, isn't it? Um, yeasty, like when you make bread and it's all kind of pale and puffy and a bit kind of blotchy when it's, um, when it's rising. There's something not nice about having those cheeks described as, as yeasty. So what is her attitude? It's difficult to pin down. There'll be lots of different things that people say here. Half a million people take this exam. There's probably half, of di half a million different kind of interpretations of attitude there. I think she's a little bit repulsed in some way. That's what I would go with. Her attitude is that she's she's a bit repulsed by the look of the baby. Okay. When my mother wheeled her home from our school, ladies stopped the pram to coo over her. Now, women cooing. Oh, look at the baby. Isn't she gorgeous? How lovely. How old is she? Oh, she's adorable. That's what cooing is. Okay. Um... Ladies stop the pram to coo over her. So maybe she is kind of proud of having a sister who uh, ladies in the streets stop to admire. So it might be pride, a proud attitude to having a sister who is um, beautiful enough to pay attention to. Um, but also maybe she's a little bit jealous as well that she is no longer getting the attention and if you look that is further emphasized by i stood i stood by so the ladies were admiring the baby while laurie her sister and i stood by fingering the spokes in the wheels of the pram so they feel a little bit neglected a little bit pushed to one side so again is that a resentful attitude does she feel that her mother has abandoned her, which we'd mentioned earlier? The word that was new that I used was neglected. She felt neglected and so her attitude towards the baby was one of envy. She felt uncomfortable that all the attention went to the baby. The little angel they tuttered and sucked now there's something really telling here it's not Andrea who describes the baby as the little angel so don't get confused it's a piece of dialogue they tuttered and sucked oh the little angel the very fact that she describes it as tutting and sucking um, shows that she is a bit disgusted by what these women are doing. I, I don't like what they're doing about this baby. She feels pushed to one side again, doesn't she? So her attitude is one of resentment. Jealousy, envy. Looks not like your darker ones though, does she? Now, that's what the women say. And what they're saying is this baby doesn't look like your older children who have dark hair and maybe dark eyes. Um, so this blonde, blue-eyed baby who everybody coos over and calls an angel and makes a fuss of, makes Andrea feel usurped now usurped is a great word because you can use it in Macbeth as well if you usurp it means that you topple the person in power so whereas Andrea and Laurie were kind of the darlings in the family now they feel like they have been usurped the darling now the little angel now is baby Sarah okay plenty to go at you can write that up. Make sure you get your timings right. Use your sentence stem. Don't use it in its fullest all of the time. You will not have time to do that. Okay.
Make sure you pay attention to some of the language. So we have some Zoom words. Um, so we've had um, strange is an adjective for strange surname. With the, adje the adjective strange in strange surname suggests that she feels her father and the way he gives her his new name is unwelcome. The word ugly to describe her new name shows hatred and disrespect in her attitude. Okay, so you don't have to spend ages and ages. Some of them can be really snappy and quick and they're going to have to be because the maximum time you have to write it up is 10, 11 minutes tops, 10 minutes good going, nine minutes probably, and eight minutes if you're really kind of trying to put a lot of pressure on yourself. Okay, right, give it a go and stop when the timing's up so that your teachers can see how much you're getting through in the time you are allowed. All right, I'll save your question for real soon, guys. Good luck.